Hey everybody, Ivan here again. Time for another Captain PvMP video. Well, I'm continuing on my slow march to rank 4 with this little guy. And well, currently he's actually up to rank 3, which I hit after all the stuff that I'm going to be showing you here. But uh, yeah, it's been pretty slow. Mostly because I'm trying to do as much of this solo as I can. And, well, <laughs> it just doesn't work out so well. As an undergeared captain, really undergeared reap of any kind, you run into a lot of troubles. Now healers, like uh, proper healers, can get away with this a lot better than other classes can, just because they can overcome a deficit in their attack damage and in their defensive statistics by compensating with healing power. Well, captains don't really function quite like that. The build I have does kind of function like that. Uh, your, your typical Hands of Healing build, they try to do that, it doesn't work out nearly as well. And, you know, I could make this build a lot more survivable if I were to just swap out some of those red line traits and pick up the Muster Courage and maybe another blue trait, like a Now for Wrath. But, honestly, the, the survivability of this particular build is all tied to your Herald, which is a major downside. Now, I did get into one group of people, it was like uh, three people all together, all low ranks of stuff. We had a, a very interesting evening. I recorded a couple snippets, but none of them turned out very good for actually showing stuff. And grouped up using a banner and using Shield Brother, this build is spectacular. Which is honestly what you expect from a captain. You expect them to be very, very effective when they're working with somebody else and, you know, coordinating with another player. Because they, the captain is a quintessential team player class, just like the war leader. Honestly, the classes that I play the most and love the most are big team player classes. So I tend to play a lot of tanks and uh, tanky healers type stuff. And I also love melee, so that's just kind of the way it goes. So you see me playing a war leader, you see me playing the captain a fair bit, and the other stuff I play is a reaver and a guardian, really. And that's just how I roll. Anyway, I think we've filled up enough space. I, I've gone ahead and posted my legendaries this time around. Uh, the legendaries are going to need a little more work. I will talk about that more at the end of the video, uh, about some of the stuff that has been found. You know, Just don't expect anything spectacular. This is mostly going to be... Well, actually, no, this is all going to be me dying miserably. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is Nursk. Uh, he's ranked 10 work, and he jumps me near Lumber Camp. And I didn't start recording immediately, but uh, I do end up trying to fight him. Now, Nursky, of course, he has Flare Stance on. And so basically, this ward is going to outlast me. Uh, he's got uh, the food buff. He's got triple... Um, uh, buff potions, yeah. Um, so he's he's actually very strong defensively, uh, and then he's got that regen from the food, uh, and then he's also going to be using his crowd control and everything. And I have just got you know my my one audacity and whatever skills I have available to me. But uh, uh, well, the nice thing about a flare ward is that they do not put out tremendous amounts of damage. I they they put out very sustained and consistent damage, but not hugely spiky, bursty damage, at least not against a captain. Uh, so I'm able to actually do a very good job of making this uh, a decent fight. Uh, another thing that I'm doing is I'm trying to do a good job of using my disease potions to take out Rabbit Bite, because Rabbit Bite will really wreck me, because the captains often have power issues, and very, very wisely feared my Herald, but he's back again. And, you know, if I if I let him get away with that, then it's just going to cause me problems. All right, now I'm just per one one thing that I'm getting better about doing with this guy is hitting Inspire every time it's up. Which you know, that's something you don't need to do when you're in PVE land. And actually, I picked up a lot of bad habits from leveling this guy mostly solo in PVE land. Uh, but Inspire every time it's up, I hitting a lot of other stuff there. I, I went ahead and used Strength of Will, which I don't typically hit when I'm playing this guy. But I am starting to have to hit in the Etmores. Uh, there we go, I got a, a crit, so I got you know, Rallying Cry off, which... My, my Rallying Cry, it doesn't have any advantages. It doesn't have any boosts from legendary items. It doesn't have any traits. Uh, I do go ahead and use the pot to get my weapon back, because I really need to, which means... Well, he doesn't have Rabbit Bed on me right now, so that's perfectly fine. But, you know, it just means that if he does rabbit bite me, that's going to just cause me more problems. Uh, but 
His damage is just too high right now. I can't keep up with it. I uh, do go ahead and get Valiant Strike off, which is going to give me a, a bit more healing. There goes another Inspire. And I should hit two arms here to lower the incoming damage. Uh, it seems like I am not aware that it's off cooldown right now. Now, there we go. I hit two arms and put more damage on him. Which I'm slowly chipping away at him. This is actually kind of surprisingly effective. Uh, the big thing about this is obviously that he has let me go ahead and keep that Herald alive. And without the Herald, I don't get all these wonderful Shield Brother skills. And that's really what has let me last as long as it has. Now, with more Audacity, could possibly be more effective. But uh, I just don't have it. And so I do eventually go down. But still, pretty decent for getting jumped by rank 10. And so now what's going to happen is a bunch of fights with uh, a friend of mine, Shurz, who he brings out just about every character that he has except for the Black Arrow. And uh, we fought two rounds each, uh, well, against each uh, character of his. And yeah, this is this is the result. Uh, this is the second round with his warg. I lost the first one. And uh, I, I went ahead and cut that for time constraints and because I hadn't even buffed up properly for the warg fight. And so... The one thing is that my bubble is off cooldown this time around because I had used it in the previous fight, so I was not able to use Shield of the Dunedine on my captain, well, my Herald pet. So he took him out very rapidly, and as you can see, wiping out the Herald for this build of the captain, I mean, I've, I've gone ahead and pulled my banner out and I've just planted it, but I am really crippled by not having that Herald because he take Losing Shield Brother takes away all of the, the special tricks that I have for this particular build and really renders a lot of my, my traits and stuff fairly useless. Now, I did still take him down well under half, uh, so Audacity could help you with that, but uh, really, you were very, very Herald dependent with this, which you know, is just something that has to be learned. Uh, now I'm, I'm up against his Reaver, which uh, anyone who watches Fellows of the Creeps, you recognize him now. And there we go with the bubble. So I'll go ahead and bubble Bunbury, which he wisely switches over to targeting the captain. And now I hit two arms for that damage mitigation, which is very, very important, honestly. It's it's a free 15%. Make use of that whenever you can. I mean, obviously, if you're not running Shield Brother, it doesn't give you that. And that only applies if you're doing the, uh, the capstone of Leader of Men to actually get yourself the Shield Brother skills. But you know, even protecting other people, if you got Shield Brother on him, make sure to, to do that. Alright, he's back on the Captain, well, on the Herald. Uh, I don't get Inspire off, I should have gotten one more application right there, but I did not. And so I am going to be finished up very, very rapidly here. Uh, if I were able to survive longer, then it's potentially I could run him into power issues, but I didn't, and a, he got his defeat responses, so you know, once he gets a defeat response from the Herald, I'm really just sunk. So now, here we go for the second round. Uh, I've got every cooldown available, and I, at this particular point in time, I am 40 points away from rank 3. So I'm hoping that, you know, out of all these fights, I'll eventually win at least one of them. I'll hit my rank, and I'll get it off of a, a kill, and, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. So, you know, I, I'm expecting to... The Reaver is the one I'm really hoping to be able to actually do well against. Uh, right now, he is going ahead and targeting me. He's doing AoEs in the general direction of my Herald, is uh, what he told me later was how he's going about this. But he was keeping focused on me, and you know, as you can see, this is going a whole lot better for my Captain uh, to be able to actually absorb the damage on myself, not have the Herald come under direct fire. Uh, when this happens, then you know, this is exactly what I want to see, because it, it, I'm able to heal myself more effectively than I can heal the Herald. I should be hitting Bubble very shortly. There we go. Shield the Dunedine up. I did go ahead and give him my uh, Words of Courage, so he's going to be boosting himself up. And I hit Strength of Will right there. And I'm... Tr okay, here we go. Inspire. So with Strength of Will up, you know, that, that is a nice boost to healing. Uh, I don't hit that as much as I, ne as I should, but uh, I, I need to be more disciplined about that. The other thing is I should have hit Time of Need early, because I do have that Composure trait, and Time of Need really does not cost much of anything at all with Composure, and the benefits you get are just amazing. Uh, here we go, I hit Last Stand, so I'm going to get another 15 seconds to go, and now he's going to turn on the Herald full force, and I'll, I'm going to try to keep the Herald up, but it's not going to work out very well. 
Okay, so there we go. I got the heal off, but I didn't do the Herald. I also missed out on another application of Inspire, so that's just one more bad thing for me. And now I'm getting ready to hit uh, Man Heal, but I'm too late. I didn't hit it in time. I could have killed him if I'd gone ahead and hit the Strength of Morale and then hit Valiant Strike right after that, before the end of Last Stand. Instead, I was too late, and I died, because he nailed me with Dev Strike. So now it's his Defiler. Uh, I've trimmed the, the Defilers down to one. Now actually, I'm going to show you both fights because I go at it two different ways for the Defiler. Um, as much as you can expect, this is going to end pretty badly. He is a rank 6 Defiler, which means that yes, he has flies, which are already up. And so he's going to be able to heal himself, drain me of power, all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not going to kite the flies because I've heard all this stuff about how kiting the flies makes you go in and out of their range and blah -de blah blah something or other. Uh, there we go, I did manage to get a crit there, so I go ahead and hit uh, Warcry, which, because of the improved Warcry and all that stuff, uh, changes they made in, I want to say update 9, I get a damage boost for Warcry and an attack speed boost. It's really a great defeat response to have on hand and use, and I really love the traded version of it, now that they've made it a lot better. Uh, got Inspire available, but I, I really need just more damage on him, so I do go ahead and hit Shadow's Lament there. And uh, actually getting a lot of crit responses is, is actually pretty nice for me. Now one other thing for these fights is I don't have any morale potions. I used those all up uh, the day previous in those small group fights that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and I didn't pick up any new ones, which is really my mistake. I should have gone ahead and grabbed them, but uh, this whole thing was kind of spur of the moment, and I didn't really have a whole lot of time to go grab everything and have it all on hand, and I didn't want to waste time grabbing a bunch of gear. So that's just one more limitation for me, which is just going to you know, make me lose more. <laughs> I, really, it's not a smart idea in general. Uh, right there, I go ahead and have the Herald do Lend Will, or uh, Resolve, I forget which one it is. I think it's Will for the Banner of Victory. Now, one, one more reason for the Banner of Victory, besides the fact that you get you know, that power regeneration boost, is that his Lend uh, Will, Resolve, whatever it is, it gives you power when he does it. The other ones don't give you power, and the Archer doesn't give you anything. So he's basically a free, you know, low-tier morale and power pot at the same time, with just one extra one. It's a, a two-minute cooldown on that, just like a, your standard pot. But you know, in this case, it's just not enough. I don't have power to do anything, and uh, I'm almost dead anyway. So Defiler, he doesn't need to worry about my Herald, which he wouldn't really be able to kill my Herald very well anyway. Uh, the one thing that I could potentially do is I could use the Herald to tag the flies, get aggro on them with uh, that threatening strike or whatever, and then move the fight away from the flies. I should probably try that in the fu if I end up in a Defiler fight in the future, but uh, we'll see how it goes. The other thing is he does a good job of keeping my Herald feared, which fearing the Herald means that he's walking away and he's not tickling people with his Feather Duster anymore. So for this round, I gone ahead and I've done the, uh, not the revealing mark, but the other one, the, the damage mark. Uh, I figured that the only way I'm going to kill this guy is if I'm able to burst him, and that this will, you know, if I do the revealing mark, it's going to be the same as last time. This way, it's actually a different, you know, way of going about the fight, a different attempt. Uh, there went the herald with his stun. Always nice to get extra stun from your heralds. And I'm also I'm trying to get it timed to hit him with an interrupt when he's trying to induct a skill. That's what I'm hoping to. But the other thing is I'm going to need to get a uh, conjunction off of my kick if I'm going to get anywhere in this. But honestly, he's healed way too much for how much damage I've put out. And while my power is already low, his, health, his morale bar is already very high. My morale bar is at half. So I'm just not doing well enough. And can't whittle him down rapidly. Captains just don't have it in the burst damage department. It's just a weakness of the class. Uh, they can hit hard when they get a nice big crit, but you can't be consistent about your crits. And that's just the way it goes. That said, when he when he slacks off on applying his hots for a little bit, you know you can work pretty well through his morale bar. Which you know, defilers, they are not the most durable class out there, except for their healing. It's just the way it goes. And I'm dead. 
Alright, next up should be his spider. Oh, <laughs> my poor little Bunbury goes after him all by himself. Uh, next is the spider. I've gone ahead and trimmed this down to only one fight, because really they both go the same way. Uh, the spider is the one that I expect to have absolutely no chance against. Uh, not only is he higher ranked than all the other characters, whereas all the others are sixes, and the spider is seven, but, you know, spiders are just nasty. Now, one thing I need to mention is I had a couple fights with a rank six spider that I recorded, and I accidentally deleted that footage, and those were some decent fights. I lost both of them, mostly because of outpost stuff, but it was actually uh, some really good stuff to see, and I really wanted to have those up, but I deleted them. So I will try to get a rematch with that spider, but it's probably not going to happen. Alright, so next is his war leader, which will be the last character for these rounds. And honestly, at this point, I'm getting frustrated because I've just lost like eight matches in a row, and I'm still 40 points away from rank, so I really want to get a kill on something. Now for these fights, we've been going with... Um, two outposts each for this side, and it's been remaining that way, so so that's been actually very, very nice for the, the whole thing. Uh, obviously, you know, my side doesn't have the relic. I think we had it for the first fight or something like that. Well, theirs does, but, you know, the 2% the is not, you know, an insurmountable advantage or anything. It's an advantage, but not a gigantic one. Uh, fortunately, I got, I've just gotten two crits there, so that's enabled me to actually put plenty of extra damage and buffs on the, and you know, that's just something that the captain class has. You know, if you get crits on those skills and you open up your defeat responses, it makes things a lot easier, and you become a whole lot tougher than you ordinarily would be. Uh, whereas if you don't get those crits and you don't get your defeat responses, you're stuck many times. That's a big reason why I love the capstone for leader of men is because it lets me have that, you know. Uh, that shout on demand with no defeat response required. It's really, really handy to have the routing cry. There we go, I got another <laughs> defeat response off of a crit there. And so I'm actually doing very, very good. I'm, I'm putting plenty of damage on him. Uh, he is staying in Brawlers, which that's fine, uh, but it's letting me do quite a bit of damage to him. I'm trying to get the, the kick off. I don't hit it in time, so he actually healed, and that was you know a little too late. Uh, I'm doing a good, a decent job of keeping my bleeds up and doing a good job of hitting Inspire and all that stuff. I uh, just used my Power Pots, although I could have used that probably 10 seconds earlier. Uh, would have been nice just to have it off cooldown a little quicker. But anyway, I'm just doing a good job. Uh, his Power of Fear, man, I really wish I could see his Death Wings so I would know when he was getting ready to do that. But, you know, I'm, I'm doing alright regardless. Uh, got another defeat response there so things are really looking up I'm actually I'm actually very pleased with just how far I'm getting into him now this is basically um, when you're fighting against a captain that's built the way I am with this whole leader of men set up using the herald and all that stuff that's for the extra little tricks out of the the capstone and having shield brother <laughs> the one thing that you don't really want to do is focus on the captain and you can see why. Against a class that doesn't have significant damage, significant crowd control options and all that, uh, you know, I can stay alive. You know, I'm still taking a lot of damage, I'm going down pretty quick, and that's mostly a factor of poor gear and not enough audacity. Um, but God, look at look at the fact that you know I'm fighting these rank sixes to a standstill with fairly even with even outposts pretty much, and I'm doing a good job of it. Now, I'm starting to run into some lag issues here because my machine is getting a little full with all the videos I've been recording. I mean, I've just recorded, well, this is the ninth fight in a row, and this is also the longest 1v1 of those sets um, so far. I think we're getting towards the end, to the point where it was be the end of the Defiler fight, which was the other long one so far. I didn't get the interrupt there, it didn't fire, I did try to hit it. And now I am at the bottom of my power pool, so is he though, so I'm really really happy about this. It means that we can both stay on each other, keep attacking, uh, I'll just keep whittling him down. He has gone into commander stance, which is a very very good move on his part, uh, but if I can keep him down, I didn't get my interrupt off in time, but if I can keep him down on his power pool, if I can do enough damage right now, uh, then I will be in a good spot. Uh, he got another heal off, which is just bad news for me. I uh, go ahead and hit 
<laughs> two arms. Don't know that I really needed to. Uh, did stun him there. I'm trying to take him out. But shortly here, I should be hitting a lag spike. And this is going to cost me big time. Yeah, I'm starting to hit it now. Because I'm not able to stay on top of him properly and trigger off skills quite as fast as I need to. And it actually allows him to heal himself right back up. Alright, 6,000? 5,000. So actually getting very close to having him dead. Now this is a, this is actually very, very good for me. Uh, I, there, I did get him interrupted right there. This is my big chance, and it triggered the conjunction. So he should be dead. Skill didn't go off. I didn't hit um, my, my skills. I should have had him right there. Um, I'm out of power. That was my chance to actually kill him. Right now, he's going right back up. He's actually doing a good job of using everything. Uh, but my opportunity is gone. The, the ship has sailed. Uh, he's still low and at only 3,000, so actually maybe I do have another chance here. But I don't have my bleeds on him, and that's a big problem. Uh, no, he just got a power of fear heal, and I don't have any interrupts ready to go, so... Yeah. He's actually gonna outheal me right now with his commander's stance. Uh, there went Banner of Terror, so that is gonna be sapping me. So yeah. No. War Leader going right back up, which... You know, this is the way a warlord needs to do it. <laughs> a quick look at my traits, because I accidentally hit that, I think. Um, but, oh, a warlord in commander stance, very good choice for fighting the captain. You will outlast them. You will win the turtle war as the warlord if you use commander stance. Um, if you can get away without it, then by all means go for that, because you will get finished a whole lot faster. Now, the one really sad thing about this is I don't know when exactly it happened, but by the time this fight is over, the outpost distribution has actually switched so that it is three red outposts to one blue outpost which that makes a big difference in this whole fight because the extra outposts not only do they increase his damage but they increase his healing and if he'd had a bit less healing you know, I got him very very low twice and almost had him you know just uh, didn't hit my skill fast enough and let him get away and wasn't keeping my bleeds up toward in the middle there um, I should have been able to finish him off but I didn't. Uh, actually, right there, I, I had to stop recording and start again because of you know just getting hitched and stuck with no frames going, which is always a bad position to be in. Uh, you can see his morale is continuing to climb, and uh, very shortly here, I think I'm going to have to do that again, so there'll be another jump in the recording. Now he's finally focusing on that Herald, and I'm doing my level best to keep him alive. And this just shows you one of the big downsides of using the Herald is that you cannot really keep him alive. I mean, this is War Leader DPS coming at him. Uh, I've got the option for all the heals and everything. I didn't hit Strength of Will yet. And I've got the uh, two arms ready to go. But I'm just not able to do much of anything in terms of actually keeping his morale at a consistent level. And this is just because Heralds are squishy and weak and they don't hit very hard. And really, they're just there as a puppet for you to use Shield Brother skills. I mean, that's that's really all they're there for. They they're really not useful beyond that. I mean, the Lore Master Pets have a lot more functionality and utility than Heralds do. Now, the one exception to that is, of course, the Archer Herald. He actually does do some okay damage, but the other ones really they they need some work because <laughs> they are very very pathetic. Now, obviously the Herald is integral to my 1v1 style with this particular build and everything, uh, but it's a lot more advantageous if you actually just go ahead and grab another player to use as your pet instead, which, uh, for those of you watching Fellowship of the Creeps, you probably have seen some of the, uh, the stuff that came out after the last recording sessions and the, the After Hours events that we did. Uh, I actually grabbed another... Uh, player, a cat, a, a hunter, it was. And we went at, went at a Defiler and a Reaver, which ended badly for us. But the thing is that on the way to that Defiler and that Reaver fight, we ran into some wargs, and those wargs, uh, it was three of them, they jumped us, they were going for that, that hunter with everything they had, and I just unloaded everything I had. I was doing every trick that I, I had in the book to keep him up, uh, putting damage down, trying to keep everything going. And it just didn't work out well at all for those wargs. They all died. They managed to kill the hunter, barely. 
um, which I was very disappointed that they actually kept that they actually managed to get that kill. But we dropped all three of them, and that's you're just you know a, a, a blow ranked captain, no real skills or anything. But pair him with somebody else, and he becomes a force to be reckoned with. Kind of reminds me. I, I get a lot of war leaders, um, especially recently, that have been telling me that they get a lot of power issues. Um, friends of mine and stuff that are asking about things, and I, I really don't get it. I, I seem to do all right on power with my guy. Now, naturally, I do have that rank 11 tireless warrior trait. Uh, but the really big thing about war leaders is if you, if you're disciplined about using your melee skills, you tend to do very well with your power and. It's mostly the uncontrolled spamming of melee skills that will sap your power as a war leader, which was something that he was doing early on. Now, it's hard not to do that because you don't have a lot of skills, and those melee skills are the ones with the shortest cooldowns. Well, they used to be the ones with the shortest cooldowns. Now, thanks to those changes to <coughs> Fracture, the war leader's entire rotation is thrown off, and you get into all kinds of other trouble. Alright, so he's finally dropped the captain, the herald, actually, um, and now I'm trying to put damage on him, but, uh, you know, my, my tricks are exhausted. I don't have any way to heal myself consistently, which, that's just going to get me killed. I mean, all I've got is if I get a response, which I, I'm actually going for damage right now, um, I can heal myself by doing damage to him with Revealing Mark. And whenever that two minute cooldown on Valiant Strike comes off, that's the other heal I get. And part of that is just, you know, all the all, all of my tricks are based around having Shield Brother. Uh, the other thing is I don't have any morale potions, which bringing those would have been very wise of me, but I didn't. Now I'm trying to put more damage on him. Actually, why am I not hitting Grave Wounds? I mean, I'll, oh, I know, I, I'm waiting for I, <laughs> the <laughs> cutting bullet attack. Okay, so there we go. I, I did a double bleed on him. Uh, I'm actually doing a good job of putting some damage down on him. I uh, don't have any stun available to stop him right there, so he heals up just fine. And uh, good on you, Termers, for actually stopping and inducting a heal off, because that's the way to do it in Brawler's Stance. When you need to induct a heal, just do it. Don't wait only for Power of Fear to get off Crack the Whip. Make use of Crack the Whip when, when you need to and you can't, because, <laughs> honestly, you can induct just fine, those inducting changes. Yeah, you're vulnerable to getting interrupted, but if you get interrupted, it's a four second cooldown. That's no longer than what you normally wait. That's actually just as long as you normally wait. Of course, he's just used up most of his power, and now I should be dead. Oh no, I went ahead and I hit last stand. I'm trying to put some damage on him. I, this isn't going to go well. I've got no power, and I'm, <laughs> I've got. 8,000 morale to go through. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Alright, uh, there we go. Last stand is over, and he gets me with a crit. Very nicely done. Alright, so that's the end of that. Um, as you can see, I did awful. Uh, I haven't won a 1v1 at all in forever with my captain. Actually, the only 1v1 I've won with him was that one war leader who ran away from me. Uh, every single other one has been either outmatched or more numbers and stuff like that. Of course, the other part is just, you know, I've got to relearn how to play the, the captain for PvP and break some of the habits I have for when I'm not PvP. And uh, part of that's probably just going to involve going into PvE and pulling way more stuff than I should, and doing my level best to survive it and win, and just getting more practice with using my cooldown stuff. Uh, I need to make much better use of time of need, because it's only a five minute cooldown, it doesn't cost a whole lot, and it opens up everything. And it also resets cooldowns on everything. So I should really pop time of need every chance I get, and either go for the war cry or go for rallying cry because that's just gonna be a, a major game changer. If I'd done that right at the start of that second reaver fight, then we probably would have seen a dead reaver because 
the Warcry boost, 5% damage, increased attack speed. That fight went on for quite a while, and my Herald was up the whole time. Would have been really good to, to have done that. Now, I tried doing that when I fought Shurs again, which you can see on the Fellowship of the Creep thing. The thing with that round was that it was three red outposts versus the 2-2 two, two balance that we had when I showed you over here. And you know, I, I hit all my skills properly in that round, except I did not have the bubble for my um, Herald when we fought at Fellowship of the Creeps. But otherwise, I did everything I could just uh, properly and all that. And that's just the way it went. I, I got slaughtered because of the outposts. Which, the outposts, I don't like how much boost they give right now. I think they are too high. The other thing is that if you're not well geared as a free people's person, you are entirely too dependent on outposts. Uh, the same goes for low ranked monster players. They are too dependent on having an outpost advantage to make up for the deficit that they have in terms of their character being flushed out. There should be a way to make up for the character not being flushed out and overcome that deficit, but outposts are basically the be all end all for that. And honestly, I'm not really happy with how that goes. So hopefully we'll see some more balance towards outposts eventually. They said they were going to do some stuff about that, but we will see. The other thing that really came to light here is just that my, my legacies need some more work. In particular, I really want to I want to get rid of the cutting attack bleed damage, which I have. I, I really need to get two legacies to really stand out. I want two arms duration, because two arms is such a great skill to have on, especially with the way that this whole build works. And having the increased duration, I mean, why do I not have that legacy yet? Just because I didn't get it, that's why I don't have it. Having that legacy, increasing that duration, that is going to go a long way towards making this captain a lot tougher. Because the longer that I've got that 15% extra mitigation, the better it is. Because I get more accomplished every time I hit my heels and all that stuff. And it just slows everything down. And the longer the fight takes, the more this guy comes into his own against most classes. I mean, the Flayer Warg, not going to work out very well against the Shadow Warg. That will work against if you can slow him down and stay alive longer. Uh, not going to help with the Defiler, but... Oh, well, and really not going to help much with the Spider, because the Spider's just going to slaughter you. But, you know, a low-ranked Black Arrow, any melee class that isn't the Flayer Warg, it's going to give you a lot more time to keep working away at everything, keep yourself alive, keep doing damage, survive, and eventually possibly win the fight. So uh, the two arm restoration definitely need. And the other one is just the melee skill power cost I would really like to have on my legacies list. I don't right now. I, I just didn't get it. But uh, overall, I'm actually pretty happy with my weapon. And actually, the other one thing that I'm really happy with is my uh, captain's symbol. I really love how the legacies turned out on that. Really, I can't fault anything on that. I love it. The only thing I haven't done yet is I still need to work up that Grave Wound cooldown legacy and spend more points everywhere. Once I get that thing maxed out, man, I, I'm going to be so happy with the way my captain runs once I get that finished. Alright, anyway, I, I think that this whole thing has dragged on long enough. The one thing that I do need to say is that after I lost the last fight against the war leader, I, I had the capture and outpost quest ready to turn in, and I turned it in and hit rank 3 off a quest, which I'm still very sad about doing, but I was very frustrated, so I did it. And now that I'm rank 3, I have access to stun and root potions. Why they make you wait till rank 3 on Freep's side, I don't know, but they do. Now I have them, hopefully next fights, uh, well next time I have some fights, if it comes down to some crowd control stuff, I'll have the ability to break out of it, and we'll see how that helps out. Anyway, that's all for this time, good luck and have fun out there. Ivanius is out.